Okay, so our final speaker of the workshop is Duncan Laurie, and he will talk about quantum toroidal algebra as braid group actions and automation. Okay, um, so thank you all for making it to the last talk of the week, and thank you, of course, to the organizers. So today I'm going to be speaking about quantum toroidal algebras. Um, more specifically, I'll sort of first introduce what these algebras actually are, uh, then we'll construct an action of what's called the extended double affine braid group, and then finally we'll use this to obtain certain interesting uh, and useful automorphisms and anti-automorphisms of these algebras, um, which should have some applications to their representation theory. Um, and I'll just mention this is all based on a paper that I put up on the archive uh, earlier this year. Okay, so in terms of our setup, um, we'll take an indecomposable generalized Cartan matrix with index set i and entries a, i, j, um, and its associated Dinkin diagram. Um, so, for example, on the right, we have affine A3, um, which I'll be using as a running example throughout the talk. Um, and then the katz moody lie algebra, which we've seen many times this week, has generators EI, FI, and plus or minus HI at each vertex, um, with a bracket defined in terms of the number of uh, arrows between the vertices. So, of course, the katz moody lie algebras are a huge class uh, of Lie algebras, but under an, uh, an additional symmetrizability assumption, they split into three um, categories. So you've got the finite dimensional simple Lie algebras, <clears throat> you've got the affine Lie algebras, and then everything else is said to be of indefinite type. Um, so these affine Lie algebras are infinite dimensional, but they're in some sense the next most complicated class after the finite dimensional simple case. Um, and so defining the affine Lie algebras in this way is nice because it allows you to classify them according to their diagrams. So uh, I've included the untwisted affine diagrams uh, on this slide, but the main thing to notice is just that they are formed by adding a, an extra zero node in a particular way to one of the finite diagrams. Um, but as we've seen many points this week, uh, objects on the affine level, whether that's Lie algebras, quantum groups, or braid groups, tend to have a second presentation. So for the untwisted uh, affine Lie algebras, we saw that yesterday. So you start with a uh, finite dimensional simple Lie algebra G, say of type Xn, uh, you consider the loop Lie algebra, um, G adjoin T and T inverse of regular rational maps from the circle into G. You adjoin a central element C and a derivation D. And what you get after this, after this process um, is precisely the katz moody algebra coming straight from the affine Dinkin diagram on the previous slide. Um, and we'll see this with the other affine objects too. One presentation will come straight from the affine Dinkin diagram, but the other will have a uh, more similar flavor to this loop construction. Um, you start with the finite thing, and then you sort of multiply by an integer gradient. And here that's given by the power of t. Okay, so as we know, given any uh, katz moody algebra, you can Q to form its universal enveloping algebra within the category of Hopf algebras um, to get the associated quantum group. So for quantum affine algebras, um, on the left of the slide, we've got generators xi plus, xi minus, and ti at each vertex of the affine Dinkin diagram. Um, and just like for the affine Lie algebras, uh, the, the relations are defined in terms of the number of arrows between vertices. So in particular, the TIs and their, and their uh, inverses generate a commutative Cartan style subalgebra. Uh, generators at non-adjacent vertices commute, and generators at adjacent vertices do not. They satisfy some non-commutativity relations like set relations. Um, now, of course, in the special case of quantum affine algebras, we have uh, a second Trimfeld new presentation um, resembling the loop construction on the previous slide. So instead of indexing over our generators, um, uh, sorry, over the vertices zero to n of the affine Dinkin diagram, we index over the vertices one to n of the corresponding finite diagram. Uh, but now we have infinitely many generators at each uh, vertex. Um, and so, okay, so, so for example, we have instead of xi plus or minus, we have xi m plus or minus, where m is any integer. Instead of uh, uh, ti, we have ki, and HIR for any non-zero integer R, and then we've got this central element C floating about as well. So to take this, um, this grading into account, the, the relations are more complicated, of course, um, so I won't include them, but they do have fundamental similarities to the relations in the original Grimfeld jimbo presentation. Um, again, they're determined by the arrows of the diagram, vertices at non-adjacent, sorry, generators at non-adjacent vertices commute, and uh, generators at adjacent vertices do not. Okay, so throughout this talk, I'll use these sort of red and blue style illustrations to help visualize everything. 
So red will gem generally correspond to something in a, a loop style presentation um, with these infinite columns of generators and blue will be for something in the usual uh, uh, presentation. So here that's the Dreamfeld Jim Um and, and sort of each diagram kind of makes clear a copy of the finite quantum group inside the quantum outline algebra. Okay, so the Drimfeld new presentation of the quantum affine algebra can be thought of as first taking the finite quantum group and then replacing the finitely many generators at each vertex of the finite Dinkin diagram with these infinite columns of generators and then modifying the relations accordingly. But this process is not special to, to finite quantum groups becoming quantum affine algebras. You can apply this just as readily to the quantum groups uh, or to any to any Drimfeld Jimbo quantum group. Um, so perhaps the next natural question is what happens if we apply it to something that's already affinized, uh, one of our Drimfeld Jimbo uh, quantum affine algebras. Um, and so what we get is called the quantum toroidal algebra. Um, and so this is denoted by UQG Tor, which can therefore be thought of as a double affine quantum group. Um, but I'm quick to remark that it's not actually a quantum group. It's not the quantum group of any uh, katz moody algebra. And so, for example, it cannot be further affinized by this process. Um, but let's establish some basic facts. So from the red-blue style illustration, uh, we can see that the quantum toroidal algebras contain two natural quantum affine subalgebras. You've got a horizontal Drimfeld Jimbo copy in blue generated by everything in the zero level of the grading. And you've got a vertical Drimfeld new style copy in red generated by everything away from the zero vertex. Um, and these horizontal and vertical subalgebras together generate the entire quantum toroidal algebra. And it's worth noting that because they're not actually uh, uh, quantum groups, they have no known co-product or Hopf algebra structure. Um, the most we have at this stage is, in some types, we have a topological co-product, which is a map from the algebra to a completion of the tensor square rather than the tensor square itself. Um, but I should say that in some situations, this topological co-product can be used to get tensor products of representations. Um, yes, OK. So let's briefly give some, some history and motivation for their study. So they were first introduced by Ginsburg, Kapanoff, and Vassarow in the ADE case as acting on the space of functions uh, on some vector bundles on an algebraic surface. And then Nakajima then gave uh, a morphism to an equivariant K-theory convolution algebra, where the varieties involved are certain Steinberg-style varieties um, of Kuma varieties on the affine Dinkin diagram. So we have these geometric motivations, um, but from a more algebraic point of view, since affine is the next most complicated class of katz moody algebras after finite, um, in the realm of quantum affinizations, these quantum toroidal algebras are sort of the next class of quantum affinizations after quantum affine algebras. And because they are sort of formed by fusing together this horizontal and vertical copy of the quantum affine algebra, um, any results about their structure or representation theory could lead to results for quantum affine algebras also. Um, and finally, I'll just say that in, in type A, there's a show of our duality with the double affine head. Um, so hopefully we're all slightly convinced that it's worthwhile to study these algebras. Um, our first result will be a braid group action. Um, so let's move over to the braid group. Right. Okay. So the story here is similar, so I'll be pretty brief about it. Um, but any katz moody algebra has an associated braid group. Right? You look at the Dinkin diagram, you have Ti, a generator, at each vertex, and then you have the usual braid relations. Um, but in the, the affine case, um, you can extend this. You can form a slightly larger group. So we define the outer automorphism group of the affine Dinkin diagram to be all of the automorphisms, and then you just quotient by the ones that fix the zero vertex. Um, and then you can form an, an extended affine braid group by taking the semi-direct product of omega with the usual affine braid group. And so here, the interaction between the two pieces is just that the elements of omega um, act on the t0 to tn by permuting them around. Uh, fairly natural. And this gives what the, what's called the Coxeter presentation of the extended affine break group. Um, but unsurprisingly, uh, there's an alternative presentation due to Bernstein. So it's generated by the, the finite uh, braid group, so t1 to tn, and then the finite, uh, sorry, a lattice of x's indexed by the finite co-weight lattice. Um, and then there are some relations between the t's and the x's, which I won't go into. Um, but, but again, the point is that this is a loop-style construction. Um, 
And then just as in the quantum algebra setting, uh, we can in some sense combine or fuse these two presentations together to form a double affine thing, the extended double affine gray group. Um, so it's generated by T0 to Tn, uh, which satisfy the braid relations. This lattice of X is indexed by the finite co weight lattice um, and the outer automorphism group omega of the affine Dicker bar. Um, but more important than the relations, which I have included, but maybe shouldn't have, is just to recognize the similarity in structure to quantum troid algebras. So in particular, you can draw similar il illustrations to represent it, which highlight a natural horizontal blue copy um, and a vertical red copy of the affine thing, and one is in each presentation, and together they generate the entire group. Um, so this is what our A3 example looks like. I've just sort of written some of the generating sets in each situation. I don't have much time to go through it, but um, let's move on to look at how the various braid groups that we've introduced interact with the different quantum algebras. So um, on the affine level, it's very well known by work of Lustig and Beck that the extended affine braid group acts by automorphisms on the quantum affine algebra. Um, so I don't have time to give the explicit equations for the action, but I'll try and give a rough idea. Um, the maybe least intuitive is, is the action of the TIs. Um, so if you look at TI, it will fix generators at vertices not adjacent to I, and at and vert, um, generators at vertices adjacent to I, it will sort of intertwine or twist them with the generators at vertices to I. Um, the outer automorphism group elements just act naturally by permuting the generators around accordingly. Uh, and then the, the sort of lattice of X is roughly act by shifting this, by shifting generators up and down um, the Z grading um, inside these infinite columns. Okay, so the first result of the paper is that we have a comparable situation on the uh, double affine or toroidal level. So in particular, the extended double affine braid group acts by automorphisms on the quantum toroid loud. And we have this in almost all types. Um, so moreover, this, uh, this blue horizontal subgroup preserves the blue horizontal subalgebra, and the red vertical subgroup preserves the red vertical subalgebra. And each of these restricted actions precisely coincides with uh, Lustig and Beck's affine action from the previous slide. So this double affine action is sort of formed by fusing together two affine actions compatibly, one in each presentation. Um, and I should mention that as part of the proof of this, we actually obtain a, um, uh, a surprising simplified finite presentation of this quantum troid algebra. Um, so it's, I find this surprising just given the original standard presentation of the quantum troid algebra with these infinite columns of generators satisfying infinitely many relations. Um, and I should note that both the finite presentation and the um, and the braid group action extend to all quantum affinizations where the underlying Dinkin diagram has at most triple arrows. Um, now, my motivation for this was the representation theory. Um, not too much is known about the representation theory of, of quantum troid algebras in general, um, but something that's been incredibly instrumental in type A is an automorphism by Mickey, which um, exchanges the horizontal and vertical subalgebra. So it sort of flips these two subalgebras. Um, and it's been used by many authors, but Mickey's original motivation was to obtain a Chari Presley style classification of some uh, loop highest weight representations by Drimfer polynomials, uh, study their R matrices, and then um, also relate two important known representations together. Um, so the goal and sort of the second result of my paper was to extend the, the, this automorphism to the simply laced ADU case. Okay, so what's the intuitive idea? So we have this action of the extended double affine braid group on the quantum troid algebra. Um, now you can write each of the generators of the algebra as some braid group element applied to a generator inside this intersection here. Um, so some braid group element B applied to some generator Z inside this intersection. Um, and more specifically, the elements of the horizontal subalgebra have B as an element of the horizontal subgroup, and elements of the vertical subalgebra have B as an element of the vertical subgroup. So the idea, roughly, is to find an involution of the braid group, which switches the horizontal and vertical subgroups, and pass it across the action to obtain something which swaps the horizontal and vertical subalgebras. Um, so more specifically, the theorem that we prove is that sending each generator B.Z to T of B.Z 
extends to an automorphism phi of the quantum troid algebra. Um, and it exchanges the, the horizontal and vertical subalgebras uh, and extends Mickey's type A result. Um, so furthermore, because of kind of by construction, we have a nice compatibility between phi and T and the break group action. Um, and also, in fact, in the paper, we also use a similar technique to find uh, an anti-involution of the quantum troid algebra with similar properties. OK. Um, so just as some future directions. Um, yeah. So it's natural to ask whether our automorphism and anti-involution extend to or sort of outside of the simply laced case. Um, we have the braid group action, right? So we can sort of define what phi should be. Um, so what breaks down, I guess. Most of our proof was also extends, but it sort of feels like outside of the simply ace case, the braid group is not quite big enough um, to access all of the relations of the algebra to show that phi is indeed a, a homomorphism. Um, but I do expect that the theorem is true in the untwisted types. Uh, and I would like to extend that. Um, then also, I'm also interested to see whether any other phenomena on the braid group side can be passed across the action to obtain analogs in the quantum algebra setting, sort of similar to how we took this involution T, we passed it across and got phi. Um, and there are a couple of ideas. There's, there's sort of more work done in this direction in the braid group side, so there are a few natural things to try. Um, but this seems like a, a promising way of getting new results about quantum troid algebras. Um, and then finally, I'll just say, as I mentioned before, um, Mickey's automorphism in type A has been instrumental for the representation theory uh, of, of the quantum troid algebra. Um, and so, yeah, extending this study to the ADE case, um, or even more generally, was sort of my initial motivation. So I'll stop there. So thank you very much for listening. Students, comments? SL2 is terrible for the quantum troid algebra because when you affinize, you get uh, a double arrow in each direction, and then things break down because part of the proof of the Bray group action uses the correspondence in the affine case between the Drimfeld nu and the Drimfeld Jimbo presentations. And for all of these things, you are allowed only single, double, or triple arrows. So once you go outside of this context, um, things break down. And I guess you have to use different techniques, which I haven't done. More questions? So can you use your break group action to define root vectors and things like that? <laughs> like um, I think getting any sort of Drimpo Jimbo presentation is something that I really want to do. Um, there's results by Yon and Sahi, which on the braid group side get a, uh, so the double affine, uh, extended double affine braid groups are not uh, Coxeter groups, but okay. they realize them as quotients of Coxeter groups. So I want in future work to maybe realize these toroidal algebras as quotients of quantum groups, something like this, and then maybe you could start going in that direction. But future work. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, I think Professor Yon is going to be here next week, <laughs> so maybe he's a better person to ask. I don't know. Um, it, the 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 diagrams that they use uh, for these Coxeter groups that they that they take a quotient of are sort of they have triple nodes and things like this. It's sort of like you take three copies of the normal Dinkin, of the affine Dinkin diagram um, and join them at the finite uh, vertices. It's Maybe it's natural to, it's not immediate. It's, yeah, so I don't know. Okay, so with that, let's thank all the speakers and the short talks. And thank you.